NVIDIA is bringing back an old favorite GPU. Are you excited for it? You better be. Intel looks to be rolling out new stock coolers. I'm excited for that. And new drivers for an updated long thought dead combination. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And I just wanna say before we get started with today's hot news, let you know that we here at UFD Media are now hiring. If you've ever wanted to work for a YouTube channel, this might be possibly open to you. We're looking for a channel coordinator who can help me with my office responsibilities here in the United States in Pennsylvania. So this will be a local in-office position and it's gonna focus on a lot of the behind the scenes work that I have to do in order to get stuff ready for both of the channels that we run, UFD Tech and Hot News. The list of both job responsibilities as well as requirements beforehand will be linked in the video description in the top link in case you want to apply for that. I welcome especially the Hot News audience to be part of it because anybody who watches Hot News likely already has the tech portion of everything filled. And in case you're looking for a job, maybe consider applying. The position can be open to part-time or full-time depending on the person i'm really looking for the right person to partner with me here in the new pa office so i'm going to be picky it really matters what you put in this initial application anybody who submits a good initial application will get a follow-up from me but ufd is hiring for usa let's go and nvidia bring it back rtx 2060 you love to see it do you oh man the violence of 2021 is resurging in january of 2022 we're expecting a relaunch of the rtx 2060 by nvidia but this time with 12 gigabytes of vram because that's somehow anti-minor yeah just put the lhr technology on it but give it more vram and just make it more accessible to the people who actually would want that type of thing I don't exactly understand it, but according to video cards, their sources are telling them that NVIDIA is preparing the RTX 2060 GPU on PG161 with 12 gigabytes of GDR6. That'll be the same as the previous one, but now we'll have the KX post fix. So it could be the RTX 2060 KX, something like that could be a possibility. There was also the RTX 2060 KO at one point. So this could be a brand new set of GPU for everybody who loves the RTX 2060, all five, thousand of you who bought one back in the previous years not quite as popular as the gtx 1060 but it does seem to indicate that if nvidia is deciding to bring back the 2060 that in january even though we're supposed to get a super series refresh they're not quite comfortable with the idea that they're going to be able to produce enough for everyone especially if the 30 super series is still on samsung this would allow them to continue to have some tsmc production for the 2016 just keep that fabrication running it could potentially help to alleviate some bottlenecks. Would you, what price would you pay for an RTX 2060 12 gig? I wouldn't pay more than like 250 at this point, right? Like the initial launch price of the 2060 was how much? Like 299, 349? 349, yeah, it's kind of gone down in value technically since then. Adding the 12 gigabytes could help. Okay, I'd say 300 bucks. 299 would be my top price for the 2060. I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. And Intel wants us to hear that they have heard us and that they need to get with the times with their stock coolers. Those just awful pieces of aluminum, it's over, okay? It, AMD's had RGB coolers for the ages now. Intel introducing their RGB cooler, the Laminar series, the RH1, the the RM1 and the RS1. Depending on which TDP you're exactly using, the i9 is going to have the RGB cooler. Everything from the i3 to the i7 is gonna be this FPO one, which looks to have like an RGB ring on the inside. And then the RS1 is gonna be for Pentium and Celeron. This is actually a pretty neat design. I'm kinda happy that they're upgrading it. Hopefully the performance is fine. We'll have to see if it actually matters. What do you think of the new design of Intel stock cooler? Let me know down in the comments. And I'll let you know what I think about this. Somebody took a CF Express card to NVMe, slapped it into their Xbox Series X, and guess what? They got it to work. It actually got recognized on it because CF Express is on the NVMe protocol and they just pumped it in there. And you can see that it was recognized by the Xbox Series X. So this opens up the opportunity for third-party SSDs to potentially be used on the Xbox Series X. However, in the Tom's Hardware article, as well as other places, they do caveat that uh, the mod would be difficult to duplicate with other hardware. Number one, the PCI Express 4.0 requirements are completely proprietary to Microsoft and also finding a Gen 4 drive with just two lanes is nearly impossible and the modder hasn't tested it with Gen 4 lanes with four lanes so the CF Express card could automatically disable two of the lanes and to which I just say 
I wonder who has an Xbox Series X to a CF Express NVMe card that also has like a whole bunch of PCI Express 4.0 drives that could possibly test this out for a YouTube video over on UFD Tech coming out today. Who could possibly do it? I don't know, probably some dumbass. By the way, this Xbox Series X, super cool, right? Has the D-brand skin, but then check this out. Portable monitor, baby! Ch just chunked onto the back of it. I'll leave a link in the video description to that. I'm super excited about that. That's coming out on UFD Tech later. And what's not coming later is crypto stocks, because it's happening now. Bitcoin up 1.28%. However, kind of having a really up and down Sunday. Just up, just bing bonging all over the place. It hit $46,300 at one point. Now it's down to $45,300. Kind of just suffering from not knowing where to go. Up, down, left, right, center. Ethereum also kind of having the same little wibbly wobbly up 3.49% on the day to be at 33 47. Dogecoin also not going anywhere, up 2.56% to sit at just around 24 cents. With the meme stocks, GameStop down on Friday, 4.4% to close at 190.41. On the other side, AMC closing above $50 for the first time in a long time, up 3.38% on Friday. The meme stunk AMC looks to be mighty. People going back to theaters, Shang-Chi seems to be doing really well in theaters. That could possibly account for some of the resurgence. And also, did you know Prostate Pro says urologist in large prostate do this immediately try tonight i don't think i will yahoo ad thank you very much and a lot of people are saying thank you very much to elon musk because he finally hit a deadline for the full self-driving beta v10 release actually came out on friday like he said it was going to the reports of this latest update are that the full self-driving is more confident in turns it actually can do a whole bunch of stuff such as roundabouts a little bit better than it could the visualization also looks a lot better so it does seem like this is getting close and closer to a more beta launch to just like people who have paid tens of thousands of dollars for this, or at least $10,000 for this technology, which Elon Musk said should have come out years ago. Anyways, more confident, obviously, with that. Elon Musk also saying previously that if V10 launch went well, we should be getting it not this coming Friday, but the following Friday, which would be great because the car that I actually ended up picking up for the charity stream that we're going to do does help full self-driving, which could potentially mean I could use full self-driving on my charity drive, but I'm not, again, holding my breath for that. And I was not holding my breath for Steam to ever update anything about their UI or UX, but it turns out that they did Steam update gives you a new downloads page as well as storage management feature that has been in beta for the last two months, but now is on the stable release channel, as you can see here, kind of changing up how the visualization works and some functionality improvements as well as storage manager having a little bit of functionality. This seems a little bit better than it was before. Steam not really updating over the years. This seems like a welcome improvement and I'm glad that they're doing it. Let me know what you think of Steam's update down below and Google Stadia updating to dying. They continue to lose executives. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is hilarious. Last week we talked about how they lost an exclusive game to PlayStation and now they've lost their director of games to Google. Google, he's going to Google Cloud. Like Google's poaching their own person from Stadia. Do we not see the writing on the wall? Stadia is so dead and they won't admit it. They're like, hey, this is so not a priority. We're just gonna yeet this guy over to a different department. But don't you worry, Stadia is still our priority. Guys, get out of Stadia while you still can. If you have an iPhone, get off that motorcycle, friend, because you're ruining your camera. According to a new forum post from Apple talking about how it could potentially damage some of the OIS sensors that are in there with the gyroscopes because of the high vibration motors that are on motorcycles, it could cause your camera to vibrate out of control and make it so that your autofocus is less good because the optical image stabilization can't stabilize the image and then it's gonna look all blurry and funky. That's your fault for designing to go vroom vroom on those little crotch rockets. You should have thought twice, but we all know anybody who's on a crotch rockets and Android user. Those are just facts, all right? And I don't know if this is a fact, but there's a leak coming out that the iPhone 13 should be the first iPhone with one terabyte storage capacity, which I don't know if I need. 256 kind of seems like the sweet spot for me on my phone currently. However, 
512 also does seem good. I'm probably just gonna continue to use more data as years go on. So what do you think of one terabyte? Do you want one terabyte on your phone? Wanna hear from you. And then on Friday, right after we released the episode of Hot News that day, the judgment came down in the Epic versus Apple saga on what exactly is going on with Fortnite being on the App Store, Epic Games saying you're a monopoly, taking so much money from all. And the judge basically said, shut up both of you children. You both go to your damn rooms. I'm sick and tired of you arguing at dinner. You're gonna have to pay the piper both y'all. Shut it. Essentially, breaking it down in the most layman's terms possible, the judge ruled that number one, Epic does have to pay Apple for violating the contract knowingly because they intentionally incited all of this against Apple. So that's their doing and they need to pay the price for it. However, Apple not necessarily being ruled as a monopoly, instead saying that they're a duopoly with Google. However, there's the indication that services such as the Butthole Company and other mobile game segments that are up and coming that could be competitors to these app stores. So it's not necessarily necessarily just a strict duopoly situation. But with that, the judge ruled that Apple can no longer prevent developers from putting their own payment links within their apps or forcing them to only go through Apple's internal payment system. It does make sense that Apple is taking a fee, whether or not the 30% fee is justified, they are providing a service, so taking a cut of that is okay. But removing the mention of other payment options certainly is not allowed, at least according to the judge. Epic not being happy with this, saying that they're going to appeal it. They don't want to pay Apple and they obviously would like a different final judgment against Apple in order to make this a little bit better. But what do you think of the Epic versus Apple ruling? Is this what you expected? Who did you think came out on top? Is it gamers? Is it nobody? Is it just the world in general is a sadder place ever since we didn't know before the Tiger King? That didn't even make sense. But Joe Exotics got me sad. And the last time we got the drivers for the Intel Vega M setup. Yeah, that's right. I said Intel Vega, which was the Intel CPU combined with Vega graphics, little uh, OEM Radeon nonsense that came out at one point. The last time we got a driver for that was 16 months ago. Well, guess what? Not any longer. There's a brand new driver that just came out that updates it for things such as Metro Exodus, as well as Resident Evil Village and AV1 Decode. So heck yeah, if you're rocking one of those bad boys, you could potentially get your drivers updated. I thought it was DOA. Like I thought they had kill driver support, but it turns out not quite it's like it's not fully dead yet it's kind of like stadia in case you like amd gpus getting extra performance there's a new open source workstation gpu driver that can get you 10 percent better performance on linux there's a new report over on pharonix indicating that the radeon si workstation drivers can increase by as much as 10 percent versus the previous version in different benchmarks such as spec view perf siemens nx as well as other different benchmarks that are out there so in case you're on linux in case you use amd you could be getting better performance and in case in case you want to work for me, I'm not sure that's necessarily a good thing. There's a link in the video description for you to apply. You could also check out yesterday's episode of Hot News where I responded to your comments. So whenever I tell you guys, hey, I want you to leave your comments on this topic down below, I want you to also know that I read them and that the comment response video is my way of sharing with you my thoughts on your comments. I'll see you tomorrow for breakfast, my friends. Cheerios. I should put Cheerios in here. That would make more sense.